So this is a quick review of how to solve logarithm equations. Um, so this is really intended for either calculus or trig or pre-calculus level students. Um, so I assume that you have seen this in the past, but you're just looking for a quick review. If you want to learn how to do this at a much slower pace, I have lots of other videos on that and I strongly recommend you check those out. But let's get into this quick review. So first of all, to solve logarithmic equations, um, really what you need to know are the basic log properties, which are these here. So these properties, really when it comes to logarithms, what tends to make or break people is whether they can write these out. So if logarithms are always a sticky subject for you, you need to just memorize these few properties. And this will make your life so much easier because most logarithm properties come down to just doing something with these, okay? So what properties do we have? I have log base A of X plus Y. So two things are multiplied together. I can break them up by addition, right? Log base A of X plus log base A of Y. Log base A of X over Y, I can break those up by subtraction. If I have log base A of X to the R, I can take the exponent and bring it out in front. This one's pretty popular. And then log of one is always zero and log base A of A is always equal to one. So if you know these five things, um, you're gonna just make everything with logarithms so much easier. The other thing that you need to know for logarithm equations is so in general, when you have log base A of X, X has to be greater than zero. So this is important because sometimes when you solve, you will get a negative number or you will get a number that will cause this to be negative. And that's a no-no because it has to be greater than zero. The other thing is that for the A, A has to be greater than zero. Also, A cannot equal one. And the reason for that, just in case you forgot, so the way that this works is if you have log base A of X equals Y, I can rewrite that as, so the definition of this would be A to the Y equals X. So if A were to equal one, then that would just mean that I have this equation here would turn into one to the Y equals one. Like this is just weird. You wouldn't make A equal one, then it's not an interesting equation. So for this video to review this concept, I have these four problems that we're gonna go through. So I do wanna just point out that most logarithmic equations kind of break into two categories. So A and B are category one, where you have some logarithms equal to a number. See how these are equal to a single number. And then the other category would be that you have one side of logarithms equals another side of logarithms. So we'll break down how to do all of this um, in the next steps. Um, so I think that when the logarithms are equal to a number, that's like slightly more difficult. So I have log of X plus log of X squared equals three. So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna just rewrite this so that you, you, you wanna get this to be a sing, single log on really the left side. And so if we think to our log properties, this is why they're so important. So if two things are being added together, then I can take whatever's here and here and multiply them. So that is where I'm going to start. So I'm going to rewrite this as log of X times X squared equals three. So that's gonna be log of X cubed equals three. So now I've gone as far as I can and to figure out how to solve this equation, I now need to use the definition of a logarithm, which I had just shown you in the previous slide, right? So this is log base A of X equals Y, if and only if A to the Y equals X. So this is the formula or the definition that you use to rewrite a logarithm. And so this is what you've really got to do. So in our example, I have no number here. So when you have just log, we just assume that the base is 10. So there is an invisible base 10 right here. So then I can rewrite this as 10 to the third equals X cubed. And then I can really easily see what X is gonna equal. So X is gonna equal 10. And now I just wanna do that quick check, right? Because remember, I also said that this X has to be greater than zero. So you always wanna just do this last check to make sure. So if X equals 10, if I plug it back into my equations, I'm all good, so we're, we're good to go for this one. Okay, so for B, now I have log base five of three X plus five plus log base five of X plus one equals one. So I strongly recommend for this one that you pause the video and try this on your own. Um, if you are trying to review this skill, you'll get more out of the video if you pause and try by yourself. Um, hit play when you're ready or when you're stuck. Okay, so same idea here. So 
This side, I can multiply um, these factors together. So this is going to be log base 5 of 3x plus 5 times x plus 1 equals 1. And then I'm actually just going to go ahead and FOIL all that stuff out. So this will be log base 5 of 3x squared plus 8x plus 5. Okay, so now I've taken this as far as I possibly can, and I'm going to go ahead and use this definition of the logarithm again. And so this will become 3x squared plus 8x plus 5 equals 5 to the first. And so that, of course, just equals 5. Um, but so now uh, we have a quadratic. So best practice with quadratic is to have the quadratic equal to 0. So I can go ahead and subtract the 5 off so that I'm left with 3x squared plus 8x equals 0. And then I can factor out an x. So if I factor out an x, this becomes 3x plus 8 equals 0. And I can set each factor equal to 0. So my answers will be 8x equals 0. And then if I set 3x plus 8 equal to 0, so I can solve this, so I get 3x equals negative 8, x equals negative 8 over 3. So here's my other solution. So I have x equals 0 and x equals negative 8 over 3. Okay, so now back to that, that question, right, of are we all good on these conditions? Okay, so in this case, we have to think about it for a moment. So if I plug in 0, so 0 is fine, right? I won't get a negative here. I won't get a negative here. What about negative 8 over 3? OK, well, now I can see if I plug in negative 8 over 3 into this, this is going to become negative, right? Same thing here. So it doesn't matter if your answer is negative. Sometimes when you plug the answer back in, this part here will stay positive. It's 100% a case-by-case -case basis. So in this case, this negative 8 over 3 just happens to make this negative. Therefore, I have to discard this solution, and we're just left with x equals 0 as our solution. So now let's pivot to the other type of problem. I actually think that these types of logarithm equations are much simpler. So in this case, so now I've got this log of 5x minus 6 minus log of x plus 1 equals log of 3. So since these are being subtracted, so if I refer to my handy dandy set of logarithm properties, I know that I can use this one here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And you know, um, I'm going to rewrite this. Let's see if I can get my pen to work. Log of 5x minus 6 over x plus 1 equals log of 3. Now notice this is one singular log, one singular log and then the insides. It's not a log over a log, right? That's not the property. It's this log and then the insides, this inside divided by this inside. Okay, so now when you have everything set up like this, you have one log equal to another log. Well, when this happens, now it's actually a much simpler situation. You can really just get rid of the logs and just take the insides effectively. Now we're not canceling out the logs. It's just, it's really more, maybe I shouldn't draw these cancel signs. It's really more that we're just taking out the insides and setting them equal to one another. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this 5x minus 6 over x plus 1 equals 3. And now I do whatever I need to do to solve this equation. So to solve this, I'm going to multiply both sides by the x plus 1. So I've got 5x minus 6 equals 3x plus 3. Okay, so now this is just a linear equation. So let's see, I'll go ahead and subtract the 3x off. I'll add the 6x to each side. So let's see, I will be left with 2x equals, looks like a 9. 2x equals 9. Let me double check that I have that right. Yep. So this becomes x equals 9 over 2. Okay, so once again, now we are in this situation where we have to double check this solution. So if I plug in 9 over 2 here, this will be positive. If I plug 9 over 2 into this, so I'll have 5 times 9 over 2 minus 6, and that will give me positive 16.5, so that's still a positive number. So this solution is all good in this case. Okay, so we've got one more here. So again, if you're trying to learn this, I strongly recommend that you would pause the video and give this a try on your own. Hit play when you're ready. Okay, so now I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and just divide 
the insides. So this is going to equal log base 2 of 3. So then I'm left with 5 plus 4x over 3 plus x equals 3. Multiply the 3 plus x and distribute. Um, okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to subtract off the 3x, subtract off the 5. So let's see, now I'm left with x equals 4. If I take x equals 4, all good when I plug it back in. So no problem, we're all good to go. Okay, so there is your crash course of how logarithm equations work. If you found this video helpful, I would love it if you'd hit that like button or comment or share or subscribe to the channel. Um, and just as an FYI, if you found that these four examples were not enough, I would strongly recommend that you check out some of my other videos where I go in depth on how to solve logarithm equations. Um, this was really just intended to be a quick review. Thanks for watching guys. I will catch you in another video. Peace.